What's up guys? A little bit of a sad start to our videos this week. Uh, you know I don't like to bring you sad videos. We like to look at fun interactions with animals and cool enclosures and ideas and stuff like that. But this morning, as I was driving um, through town, came across an eastern box turtle. Um, eastern box turtles are one of the six subspecies of box turtles in the U.S. And this time of year, especially, you'll see a lot of turtles, especially box turtles, trying to get across the road, um, moving about quite a bit after winter's over. You'll see snapping turtles, as we saw in our last video, common snappers. Uh, females this time of year are moving around trying to lay their eggs. Same thing with box turtles. Uh, if you've never seen an eastern box turtle, for some of our uh, viewers that are not from the southeast, these guys are really cool. They're really vibrantly colored. Uh, reds, oranges, yellows, are, you know, really pop. Unfortunately, these guys are also vulnerable. Uh, a lot of it has to do with human activity. You'll see um, these guys in the spring, like I said, trying to cross roads. Um, they don't have large home ranges, so they kind of stay in the same area that they were they, they were hatched in, that they grew up in. And a lot of times when people build roads through there, you know, it's right in the middle of where they live. So, you know, coupled with the fact that they're pretty slow moving, um, you know, with the reproductive rate of box turtles is not that great. They don't have that many young. They are very long lived. They can live, you know, I think there's documentation of living up over a hundred years or right at it. But the sad part is they're considered vulnerable now because, you know, they're getting uh, hammered pretty, pretty hard on the, on the streets and, uh, and whatnot. And habitat loss, you know, when people come in and, and change a forested area, you know, where these guys are found, you know, it disrupts where they live. But, you know, I don't like to show gruesome videos or show dead animals, you know, I'm not trying to get clickbait here for, you know, views or anything like that. But I do think it's very important that we, you know, discuss the importance of if you see a turtle trying to cross the road, if you have the ability, get out there and try to help it. Um, with box turtles and all turtles, you want to uh, move them where they're headed. So if he's headed across the road and there's a way that you can get out there safely, you know, take him across the road, take him where he's going. Uh, I'm going to show you the little guy here in just, just a second. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we don't want to lose these guys. These guys are, you know, like I said, the state reptile of North Carolina for good reason. They're also the state reptile of Tennessee. So we want to protect them. We want to make sure that future generations are going to have these guys. Um, lost my train of thought. Move, moving them. Move them in the direction that they're going. So head across the street, pick the little guy up, take him across the street, let him go. Don't try to rehome these guys. Don't try to take them home because they're out of their home range. They're going to be confused. And, you know, we don't want to do anything like that. We just want to keep them out in the population and let them reproduce and make more of these little cool guys. And this is the little guy. Um, there was actually another good Samaritan out there trying to to get to him first, but by the time we got out there, it was too late. Uh, yeah, just notice the, the really cool color, colors and patterns on these guys. Just the, how the yellows, you know, contrast off that, that, that dark shell. You know, there's a little bit of blood right there um, where he was hit, so. Sorry about the sad video, but I just wanted to bring attention to these guys. These guys are really cool and, you know, they deserve our protection, especially if we're creating instances where, um, you know, we're the cause of it. You know, I'm not saying, you know, that uh, accidents don't happen. I would surely hope and think that people are not trying to hit them intentionally. But, uh, you know, if you can, like I said, let's help these guys out. Let's, uh, let's make sure they're around for future generations.
All right, now to the rest of the video. It's not gonna be quite as sad. Actually, very exciting. Take a look at this guy. Brought one of the sulcatas down. We're actually doing a reptile presentation today. Busy, busy, busy day. So he is enjoying all this grass. He'll probably be eaten down in a, a few days. We got the other um, eight of them. Actually, seven of them, sorry. They'll be down in a couple days. Anyway, I wanted to take a look at this is going to be the more or less crocodile enclosure we talked about in a few videos past uh, digging out the pond it's kind of hard to see how deep it is there probably three three and a half feet pretty good size so we're going to run parallel to the so-called enclosure uh, chain link fence we're actually going to dig it out and um, secure it we're going to take it all the way up here so he's going to have quite a bit of land area i'm going to go over here to the corner of the enclosure where the corner post will be so this will be the corner post so you can see he's got quite a bit of area up here we got the palm trees planted up there beside of the water kind of create a little tropical oasis we will have all this out here a lot of land area to... he's about seven feet now maybe six and a half seven feet Um, yeah, we'll let you know how all this goes with the pond. We're going to fill it up. We've tamped it down. We're going to get another tamper and see if we can get this clay, this North Carolina clay to hold water. We'll see how it goes. Thanks guys.